Good evening to you parishioners and friends of St. Francis Xavier Catholic Community. My name is Paul and I welcome you to our Sunday Eucharistic celebration on the fifth Sunday of Lent, Year C. In today's Gospel passage, Jesus, while not condoning the sin of infidelity, he, however, in a gentle but persuasive way, pointed out to the women's accusers that each of them, in one way or another, do commit sin and were in need of God's mercy. Though some sins are graver than others, nonetheless, everyone needs God's mercy and forgiveness. In this Mass, we pray for the intentions of all parishioners and friends of our parishes. Mercy Williams, Riley Kemp, Lorna Rebecca, Cara Kennedy, Carol and Ken Ashcroft, Kim Lord. We also pray for the repose of the souls of Akai Evaluva Thingle, Celestino Magno, Lisa Remy, Gilbert Remy, Eduardo Pelodo, and Priscilla Fiel. Please stand and join in reciting the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. In this Mass, we pray for Audrey, women who celebrates her birthday on the 3rd April tomorrow. God Almighty God grant Audrey strength and grace and many more fruitful, healthy years ahead. We also pray for the birthday remembrance for the soul of Gertrude Ferdinand whom God called home on the 3rd April, that the Almighty God grant Gertrude Ferdinand eternal rest. 
I will pray for healing of Margaret Belly, Kim Lord, Sostina Kamali, that Almighty God grant them healing, strength, grace, and blessings. And for the healing of Mama Matthew, Michelle Liju, Joshua Liju, James Joseph, Joanna Chaco, Maria Dinato, and Maria. Almighty God grant them healing, blessings, and grace. And for the protection of the Serenko family in Ukraine, that God protect them, bless them, and grant them the sick among them healing. And for Ashani, for transformation and conversion. And for the private intentions and well being, family intentions of Conception and Cheta, Miriam Rajandran, Ramona Kit and Fallon Women, Jenny Kaspers, Sue Hunt, Janet Louis. And for conversion and strength and blessings of Leah Women. And for our own different intentions, family intentions, that the Almighty God grant us whatever we ask in faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ's son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who made a way through the sea, a path in the great waters, who put chariots and horse in the field, and a powerful army, which lay there never to rise again, snuffed out, put out like a wick. No need to recall the past, no need to think about what was done before. See, I am doing a new deed. Even now it comes to light. Can you not see it? Yes, I am making a road in the wilderness, paths in the wilds. The wild beasts will honour me, jackals and ostriches, because I am putting water in the wilderness, rivers in the wild, to give my chosen people drink, the people I have formed for myself will sing my praises. The word of the Lord. Please join in the responsorial psalm. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew Oh, God, and renew 
Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I believe nothing can happen that will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For him, I have accepted the loss of everything, and I look on everything as so much rubbish if only I can have Christ and be given a place in him. I am no longer trying for perfection by my own efforts, the perfection that comes from the law, but I want only the perfection that comes through faith in Christ and is from God and based on faith. All I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to share his sufferings by reproducing the pattern of his death. That is the way I can hope to take my place in the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have become perfect yet, I have not yet won. But I am still running, trying to capture the prize for which Christ Jesus captured me. I can assure you, my brothers, I am far from thinking that I have already won. All I can say is that I forget the past and I strain ahead for what is still to come. I am racing for the finish, for the prize to which God calls us upwards to receive in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please stand to welcome the good news. With all your heart, turn to me, for I am tender and compassionate. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. 
And at daybreak, he appeared in the temple again. And as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery and making her stand there in full view of everybody. They said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. And Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. As they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman, who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you said Jesus, go away and don't sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and do not sin anymore. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Gradually, we are coming close to the end of Lent. On the other hand, we are getting close to the Paschal Feast. We are gradually moving away from the zone of suffering to the zone of glory. The central theme of the three readings of today is a message for God's steadfast love and the readings remind us that we should not be self-righteous and condemn the lives of others when God is calling them tenderly to conversion, never to judge. All the readings of this Sunday give us hope and paint a picture of a very bright future for us and reminding us of God's readiness to forgive sin and to give a sinner a second chance, bind up broken lives and restore people to his friendship. He wants us to come back to him to be his close friends through our good lives. Today's readings challenge us to show the same mercy to the sinners around us and to live as forgiving people, actively seeking reconciliation with God and with one another. In the first reading, explaining how merciful God forgives the sins of his chosen people 
and leads them back from this Babylonian exile, the first reading reminds us that we too are forgiven and we are saved from our own sinfulness and shameful past. And the reading reminds us that we should never look back again or to allow the past experiences to wear us down. For God's forgiveness and mercy is more powerful than anything we can think of or any type of sin. In the second reading, Paul presents himself as a forgiving sinner who has been completely transformed by his faith in Christ Jesus. His life is an example of the gospel exhortation, sin no more. Paul loves Christ so much. He wants to share in his suffering and even in his death so that he may share Christ's resurrection. And Paul reminds us that we are on a, a rest. As far as we're still in the world, we are running a race. We have not finished our own race. We have to be very careful on how we run to be able to win the crown of unfading glory through our own ways of life, through how we portray the dignity of whom we are as Christ, as Christians, how we show mercy and compassion to people around us, how we forgive ourselves and forgive those around us, and how we reconcile with our God to be holy, humble, good people, to show Christ to people around us. For action speaks louder than words. Our lives preaches more than what we can say. That's why in the Gospel reading today, the sinful woman's story of sin committed and sin forgiven shows the inexhaustible mercy and compassion Jesus offers to repentant sinners. In addition, by making sinlessness the condition for throwing the first stone, Jesus forces the accusers to assess their own souls and to leave. Nobody is perfect. Thus, he grants justice to the accusers, and mercy to the sinful woman. In our own lives, we bear witness to the justice of God by confessing our sinfulness and resolving to avoid sin. And we bear witness to God's mercy by accepting the forgiveness of our sins and promising to forgive those who have offended us. This gospel reading challenges all of us today. How do we look at one another? Do we, do we, do we condemn the other to put ourselves that we are righteous? He said, no, nobody is perfect. If we examine our own lives as if we are not perfect, why pointing an accusing finger to the other? Why condemning and judging the other? We pray for them, for conversion, for turning around. That's why this Lenten season, the time to turn around, the time to leave our past experiences behind because we are out of Egypt. We are no more in Egypt. We are now in the promised land of Christ's suffering and death and resurrection, the time of redemption, we are now in a new era, running the race of life, the unfading glory waiting for those who do good. That's why the church advises us today that we need to become forgiving people, ready for reconciliation, for Jesus has shown us inexhaustible mercy and compassion to sinners by dying for us, sinners. But we are often self-righteous like the Pharisees and ready to spread scandal about others 
with a bit of spicy gossip, jealousy, and envy that we should never indulge in destroying another's character or reputation. For we are not perfect ourselves. The church reminds us to learn to acknowledge our sins, ask God's forgiveness every day, and extend the same forgiveness to our erring brothers and sisters. That we need to learn to hate the sin, but love the sinners, showing them God's compassion and working with the Holy Spirit to make our own lives exemplary so that we can help lead them to Jesus' way. Our lives shows or speaks more than what we say. Let us show that good example people will emulate because we are the ambassadors of Christ. To be an ambassador of Christ, we must be the light to the world, salt to spicy, to salt their lives. Our lives will preach to them for conversion. The church reminds us today that we have no right to judge others because we often commit the very faults we condemn. That we are often partial and prejudiced in our judgments. And we do not know the circumstances which have led someone to sin. Hence, let us leave the judgment to our merciful God who does, who does read people's hearts and minds that we should show mercy and compassion to those who sin because we ourselves are sinners in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. God calls all of us today always ask for forgiveness. Praise God, thank him, ask for your petitions and ask God, I am a sinner like that publican in the church. Lord, have mercy on me. This is the time of asking for God's mercy. And when God is going to have mercy on you, you must surely have mercy on your brothers and sisters, family members. Let us then be the good Christians that will be the ambassadors of Christ and live out our faith in concrete action and words and deeds. Let us stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God. Mighty. Look at our heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of intercession. Sisters and brothers, we have seen the sensitivity and compassion of Jesus towards the woman whom others were condemning. May we learn from his example. That in these last two weeks of Lent, we will want one thing alone, to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And as we seek the mercy of God for our own sins this Lent, we will show mercy and kindness to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the mercy of God will deliver the people of Ukraine and many other places around the world from the destruction evil of war and make peace possible. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That by our supporting Project Compassion, young adults attending vocational schools in the Solomon Islands will receive clean water, nutritious food, and dignified housing while they learn life new skills. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That our sick, Mercy Williams, Riley Kemp, Lorna Rebecca, Cara Kennedy, Carol and Ken Ashcroft, Kim Lord, be surrounded by the love and care of family and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That our recently departed, Ekai Avalu Thingal, all the suffering souls in purgatory, and those whose anniversaries occur at this time, Celestino Magno, Lisa Remy, Gilbert Remy, Eduardo Peloto, and Priscilla Fiel. May they be received into the Lord's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pause and pray with our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us then surrender our own personal prayers and petitions to our loving God and all those we are praying for in this Mass. The dead, God will grant them eternal rest. Those celebrating their birthday, God will grant them many money, more fruitful, healthy years ahead. And for the family intentions, God will bless them. And the sick, God will grant them healing, strength, and grace. And for our own needs, and the needs of our friends, we surrender everything unto the Lord through our blessed Mother Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for all sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus for all the benefits you have given to me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, of you three things I pray, to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly, day by day, and grant me whatever I ask in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. Hear us, Almighty God. And having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts. That freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, I entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that it held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Peter our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Especially Gertrude Ferdinand and all the holy souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her mother's spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Francis, Xavier, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to recall us eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we die to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are waiting joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bow to each other as a sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, Jesus. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy. I should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. For the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us to everlasting life. Amen.
second collection, please. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please let us sit and then watch the, the notices. As we thank all those who have donated generously to the grotto we are about building there, according to the, the sculptures, they've called and said that the grotto is now ready. They are now putting the decorations like the paintings. By next week, they will shift, they will ship it to be coming. And then, but then we have not completed the finances as we know. We're still asking for your help, for your donation, and for buying the tickets. You can buy the ticket, three for five dollars, one ticket for two dollars, or whatever you can donate, one dollar, ten dollar, fifty dollar, five thousand, ten thousand, because we are targeting ten thousand plus. The highest donor, for this grotto is not from our parish. It's from another parish. Only that he heard about it in the, um, during the um, streaming mass. He heard about it and then sent the money. You see, but we are asking our parishioners to help, to make our dreams. We realize our dreams. And then Outreach Sunday, please take one of the flyers, put in the neighbors, um, you never know who it will touch to come for the Easter celebrations of the Divine Mercy Sunday. The flyers are in the foyer, and also the envelopes, Thanksgiving envelopes are in the foyer, pick up 
look at them, see your neighbors or your friends, give to them only St. Francis because St. John's, they have their own. As I said, we thank all for your generosity, for your support, and for your prayers. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Go in the peace of Christ, for this Mass is ended. Thank you for coming, and I wish you a very good and wonderful weekend. God bless you. Hey, Tom.